A few weeks ago on my way down to Florida, I realized I had an issue with my dual battery system that was preventing it from charging my secondary battery. Unfortunately, I think I have a short in one of my power cables for my dual battery system. Today we're going to dig into that system and figure out what went wrong and fix it. After investigation, one of the 30 amp circuit breakers for my C-Tech D250SA battery charger was constantly tripping, cutting the power to my battery charger. The first thing I want to do is grab this nice clamp on multimeter that can tell you how many amps are running through a cable. Don't try and read the amps going through a cable like this with a normal multimeter. Those little tiny lead wires will melt and you'll have a hot smoky mess. These clamp-on style meters are designed to measure the flow of current without actually touching the wires. This will tell me if there really is more than 30 amps going through causing the circuit breaker to trip. And if there isn't, I'm going to assume that the circuit breaker has gone bad. This wouldn't be too surprising to me as these 30 amp circuit breakers were pretty cheap when I bought them. I highly recommend one of these clamp-on multimeters for anyone running a dual battery system or solar panels in their car, camper van, or overland vehicle. I bought this one at Lowe's, but you can also find it on Amazon for around $70. Okay, so I've been running the car off and on, and so far I've only gotten the breaker to trip once. Um, but I was watching the, uh, the multimeter, and it was reading at about 24 and a half amps when it tripped. Um, I've been setting this thing to the max to read out so it'll only show what the maximum amps it's read is and I haven't gotten the breaker to trip again um, but it did trip that once and it was tripping multiple times when I was down in Florida. So I got the parts. I'm gonna go ahead and replace that circuit breaker with the new one since it's gonna be a higher quality one anyway that's waterproof. Um, I don't know if there's just something wrong internally with that one, but the fact that it's tripping at around 24, 25 amps when it's supposed to be a 30 amp breaker, I'm fairly certain that the breaker is what's bad. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect all that stuff, cut the cables up, remake them, and uh, connect the new circuit breaker, and we'll run it for a while and see what happens. First thing I'm going to do is disconnect my car battery and then disconnect both ends of the power cable that runs from the car's battery to the SeaTech charger. From that point, I'm going to see if I can remove the insulation on the bad circuit breaker to see if I can disconnect it from the wire without having to cut it. But eventually I give up and cut the cable anyway. These cables I'm using are really thick 2 gauge welding wire, which makes them tricky to cut without the proper tools. So I do the best I can with a pair of big metal shears, and it's not too bad, just gotta clean up some of the wires. Next, I'm going to prep the ends of the cables for the new terminal lugs. I use the lug to measure how much of the rubber insulation to remove. It's important to get this length right. You don't want to remove too much rubber and expose too much of the wire, but you also don't want any of the rubber insulation going inside the terminal lug and preventing a good crimp. One issue I didn't expect was that the copper core was too thick to fit into the terminal lug, even though they're sized for this gauge of wire. Perhaps it's because my wires are made out of welding cable. I'm not sure. I'm going to peel back just enough of the copper core to make a snug fit on the terminal lug. Ordinarily, I wouldn't recommend doing this, however these cables I built are way overkill for this application, so I'm not worried about losing a bit of cable thickness here. They are still a lot thicker than necessary. I just need to make sure to snip back the stray wires as flush as I can. Now 
Now getting a good crimp on a lug this size is tricky without the proper tool, but I'm on the other side of the country and I can't mooch off of my buddy's shop tools. So taping the lug down on the flat part of a vise and using a hammer and a punch, or in my case, a decent sized lag bolt, is enough to punch a good crimp into the lug that I can't pull free or wiggle with my hands. To finish off this end, I'll be using this really nice heat shrink tubing I got on Amazon for pretty cheap. It's thick and it has an adhesive layer inside that melts when the heat is applied, essentially waterproofing and protecting the connection. It's also important to use a decent length of this tubing on each connection. Not only does it protect it from the elements, but it provides some strength and rigidity to the crimp. Now I just need to repeat this process for the other side of the cable that's going to be running to the battery charger. Here you can see where the adhesive lining inside the tubing has melted from the heat gun. The replacement circuit breaker I'm using is this Blue Sea Systems 30 amp waterproof breaker. The superior quality of this breaker is apparent as soon as I took it out of the package. Handily, the breaker is marked for which end connects to the battery and which end goes to the auxiliary system. In my case, that's the SeaTech. So now it's just a case of connecting the wires and seeing if my problem has been resolved. Over the next week, I ran the car for about a half hour a couple times a day, as well as driving to the store and running some errands, and the battery system has worked flawlessly. No more trips. Right now, the world is shut down thanks to a rogue virus, so I'm hunkered down with my family in North Carolina. Traveling and adventuring really isn't an option right now, so I'll do my best to come up with some videos I can make in the meantime. Hopefully I'll be able to safely travel soon so I can get back to creating more adventure videos. If you'd like to follow along with the rest of our adventures, make sure to subscribe. And to make sure you don't miss out on any other videos, click the notification bell as well.